All right. Well, we're back with what feels like the end of the edition stat show. You know, not not exactly this one, but things are definitely tar- starting to peter out as the new edition rears its head for yes, good reason. Winding down. Fewer players in the tournaments. The the player count keeps going down. The uh, podcast listens keep going down. I'm sure it'll all blow up again when third edition comes back. Yeah, I, mean, I am curious to out. see how Nova is going to be. You know, later this week, I will be going to Nova. I'll be playing, I think, Casterkin, one of our malign boys that has not done all that well throughout the year. However, for this week's stat show, we've got a surprise. Casterkin, all the way at the top, 83% win rates. Wait a second, Four did players. you send me the wrong chart? Where is Casterkin? Oh, yeah. They're, oh, yeah. They're wow. there. Okay. They're there. They're at the top of the meta this week. Th- three, three zeros at three small tournaments. Uh, I'm not super surprised because Casterkin are very good, especially if you're if you are the best player in the room, you will just put the boot on everybody. Turns out they were able to beat a field of all the meta picks with one of them having a Mandrake player, a bunch of Space Marines, so definitely the hunting ground. Another tournament with Chaos Colts getting second, the other undefeated. So who knows what would have happened in Casterkin versus Chaos Colts out in it's wild. It's uh, Argentina wild with Brood Brothers. Going tie loss draw, so and inquisitorial agents also going tie loss draw, so Casterkin doing pretty well there in Argentina, and again going three zero but not the winner in Russia. So they still got a still got some juice in the tank, and we'll see how I do at Nova. I'm just hoping to do well and feel competent. I'm curious how I'll do in the wider matchups, considering I have practiced exactly zero games basically this year. And I just fully think that the team is good. So I will just play the way I think I need to play, and we'll see how it goes. Well, definitely excited to hear about that. Um, And Nova is this weekend, isn't it? It's this weekend, yeah. So for anyone watching this on the Monday of release or the Friday for YouTube, uh, if you're at Nova, come say hi. I won't be there, but Travis will be there. Got a Star Striders out here, you know, 80%. They've also been doing very poorly this whole year. So I wonder if, I wonder what changed over the over this weekend. But I think it might just be people picking up teams and playing stuff and people not knowing where the teams are at. Hunter yeah, LaCroix best players out looking in, for a change of pace. Yeah, up in Maryland. Uh, Orion brought his Far Soccer, only played two rounds and then dropped. So out in Maryland, there's a small tournament with eight players. And Star Striders took the final win. Strike Force Justine finally uh, had their the glow up that they've been looking for. <laughs> Little uh, sixty, slightly above sixty percent win rate. Overpowered. We got to nerf them. Yeah, they're gonna get nerfed into the ground for sure. And then Hive Storm will bring them back into full relevance. Maybe. Who knows? I'm actually very curious to see if Justine actually makes it through the the Hive Storm. If crucible. they appear in third edition. Yeah. Harkin uh, Salvagers uh, continue to do Force well. Justine, uh, yeah, you know, this Hearts is like the best they've done, though. This is yeah, a nice yeah, yeah. little bump there. I mean, this is a difference from like one or two players doing well with them. This week, they had out of six players, three of them went 3 0. Wow, one in Sacramento, one at a team tournament out in Florida, Florida, and one in Australia. So, just the the dwarves picking up the slack all the way around the world. Let's see where the Hernkin are. Ooh, another poor week for the Hernkin. After Coming sticking it with around. a pretty good 50-50 for, I think, the better part of three for months. Pretty much the whole off. time. Yeah, yeah two back-to-back weeks of 30%. Seen. To be fair, one of the players out uh, did go 3-0. And a couple of the records are pretty decent. This one's in the Phil. Oh, no, not the Philippines. Ooh, where is it? Oh, it is. Hernkin Jaeger in Florida at the team tournament. So it was a, a pair of dwarves taking first place in Florida. Hilarious. I wonder if the two teams do a good job of complementing each other's weaknesses, too. You know, Hearth can take down the shooting matchups and can punch through armor, where the Hern can, can tank all of the two shot matchups. Yeah, incoming melee. Yeah, high-fiving each other all the way up the top of the ranks. Warp Coven also showing off some good stats. A 60% win rate with a 3-0 record, so a real 60%. That win came out of Mexico. 
To be fair, that was a 15-person tournament, so they definitely needed one last round to really see who it was going to be. It would be Warp Coven versus Scout Squad, it looks like, for the last round. Oh. So that would have been an interesting matchup. One that I would kind of expect Warp Coven to have a reasonable shot at. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're kind of... Uh, I can see it going either way. That would be a fun one to uh, to observe. Speaking of Scout Squad, they have uh, jumped in popularity to be the most popular team of the week and keeping a pretty high win rate while they're at it. Yeah, um, 16 out of 193 60%. players. It's a big chunk of our our sample size. Yeah. The uh, the the thick the thick boy Space Marines coming in with uh, thick representation. Lots yeah, of uh, one lots of the of players four zero at the team tournament at a different team tournament. I don't even know. I don't know quite how. I don't quite understand how these scores are getting reported in PCP. We've got some three rounds, some four rounds. So. At any rate, they did well. They had a four zero run. They had a, there was a three zero run in España, so in Spain, at a nine person tournament, so probably much smaller. And a 201 finish out in Mexico at that same tournament, the same Warp Coven player that we were just talking about. Pretty good weekend overall. Lots of uh, win higher, lots more wins compared to losses. One more guy in striking contentions in Agravius, which is the Mexico tournament. So a 2 0 going into the last round, taking an L. So they have kind of. They're kind of where commandos were in terms of like play rate and stats right now. Just a big, chunky, 10 wound, 10 op team with a bag of tricks. One of them, yeah. commandos, get a, ba- get a bomb squig, and scout squad get to mess around on the first turn and pretend like they're playing the game. Nemesis Claw right there behind them with a 57% win rate. So continuing the vibe of Nemesis Claw just being the best of the intercession or best of the elites that gets actual play numbers. They're still out here, still doing their thing. Have two, yep. three notable 3 0 or 3 plus records. Uh, Ghost of the Donut out in uh, Eastern Bloc Country um, went 4 0 with Nemesis Claw. Getting outscoring the commandos in second place and Nemesis Call versus Commandos in the finals round would be a pretty interesting matchup, I think. So it's too bad we didn't get to see that one in a bigger setting. Yeah. Um yeah, Nemesis Claw wasn't that far ahead of Legionary. Legionary looks like they're just a couple percent below that. Um intercession as well. Kind of like it seems like it was a, a pretty good weekend for elites as far as they didn't get totally stomped. I mean they weren't like stomping anybody, but that doesn't really happen so much these days, except apparently with Strike Force Justian. Yeah, the Legionary did have two notable three zero results with one with two players basically going three losses. So this week, if those two players in those three loss games didn't play, the w- actual win rate for Legionary would have been pretty solid this week. So that's not to say the Legionary don't still have the tricks and t- tools with them. It's just you know, it's going to be harder to use them. Intercession at a 50-50, where they've generally, I think, been around like 40, 40, 45%. So a pretty good week for them, all told, with a couple tournaments in striking distance. There are two, three, one records with two guys losing their final round and then another two, one record losing the final round. So in the Philippines, in, I think, Russia, and Ghost of Donut also probably Eastern Bloc. So there, in two Eastern Bloc countries, there were two intercession players at two separate tournaments that could have been 4-0. But I would expect that that would be the breaking point for most intercession players at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, they're fun, but uh, once you once you get up there, you just run into things that intercession just can't deal with. Yeah. If we did have one wish for Hive Storm, at least if we wanted Elites to be a bigger part of the meta, we're hoping that some changes come down the line that let Elites have a little bit more room to play the game. And I feel like, from what we've heard from all the people who are working on the game, that it's probably an active issue they've been looking at 
And they've probably yeah. been testing stuff the whole time. Like Warcry, I know you played Warcry a little bit. They have their own way of dealing with the elite problem where I think big models can pass, right? When you're getting out activated. So you can skip an activation and then pick up your leftover activations later on. Is that, I don't know, I haven't played Warcry in yeah. a that, long time, that, but I think that's that how that works. That ends up not being nearly as helpful as it sounds, but, uh, you know, I would be excited about a third edition or second, whatever the next edition of Warcry is as well, because I'm sure... It seems like uh, every time they launch a new edition of something, they've they've learned a lesson from a parallel game, whether it was something yeah. that did work or something that didn't work. So, yeah, I think looking yeah. at their other skirmish games, War, Warcry, no, not Warcry, uh, Underworlds. Underworlds is a fixed activation system, so you only get, I think, ten activations or twelve activations a turn. It's twelve for the whole yeah. game, or for the whole game, yeah. So you and a lot of the spells that you push stuff around so instead of physically moving your operatives you're like casting spells to like blow people around so it's a little different but you know so they've got those two examples of skirmish games that may or may not work they've got boarding actions they've got some other stuff so hopefully they've got that's on the docket and i would expect that for any of our elite players if they do make some big changes it's gonna be time to don the power armor and start crushing foes i wouldn't mind if the era of the space marine was here obviously yeah yeah, as far as our weakest players of the week, we got Novitiates and Breachers down in the dumps again, right there alongside Higher Tech and Blooded. Uh, it's funny because Blooded will shoot up from time to time, but the generic play rate for the average player picking them up definitely is not too great. So probably representing that they are very hard. Novitiates and Breachers also pretty hard, but Breachers might just not have it in the tank because they just have not been doing that well overall. I think Breacher's problem, like, they were really strong when they came out, so people played them, but then, like, when their rules weren't so strong, uh, the just the vibe of the team wasn't as cool as, like, all the other normal humans, so yeah. the people were like, if I want to play normal humans, I'm going to play, like, Kasserkin or something, because they're way cooler, and then uh, none of the great players are playing Breacher's, but I'm sure if someone was an amazing player, they could pick them up and just go crush people, because they really does seem like their toolkit is still kind of insane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really know where the Delta is. To be fair, they're not a very popular team. So out of the lowest running teams, I think probably the best data set we have is going to be Phobos, Hernkin, and Commandos, because those are 6%, 6% for Commandos, 3.6% for Phobos, and then 4% for Hernkin. So those are probably closest to like actual data sets. And then going up, Mandrakes, you know, 13 players played them, 6.7% of the meta. 46% win rate, so, you know, not doing all that hot as a team. To be fair, they're still doing pretty well out of these results. You've got a 2-0-1, a 3-1 with a 3-1 and a 2-1, both in striking contention. And then a couple tournaments where they do well, but they're not, not really in range to win. Yeah, they kind of feel like they have the same sort of, like, vibe and potential as, like, peak Void Dancer where they have the potential to be really gnarly and just abuse people, but also they just have some hurdles that they can never get over, like, no matter how good the player is. Yep, yep. As far as Compendium goes, we had a strong showing for two of our Compendium players. One out in Segmentum, Colorado. We had them on a ways back. Uh, a 12-round tournament where they played four rounds, so everybody in the top three has a loss. And there were four, or there were five, three, one results. Mulching pit. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can see what roster they were playing. I doubt it, unless their event is still active. Nope. Who knows? Well, if you're curious, you can always hit up our Segmentum Colorado episode and go ask their Discord and see what's up with them. Meanwhile, we had a 3-0 result in Ohio at a three-rounder eight-person, so about right for what I would expect. Uh, it looks like it might have been a Compendium tournament, because I see Compendium, Comrite, Ecclesiarchy, Death Guard, High Fleet, Comrite, Compendium, Space Marine, so maybe Compendium is just demons? <laughs> yeah, because we don't have a, one here that's specifically just demons. Well, Brood Brothers, as usual, uh, doing pretty well. Doing Seems pretty like well. They, 62% they win rate. Nice ranked. potential there. Yeah, they are definitely the top, one of the top teams of the meta, for sure. You know, there's not too much that hunts them easily. 
And the 10 womb teams that I guess theoretically would have a good chance against them are struggling at the moment. Yeah, kind of just running free, doing mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah. Uh, anything else that you want to take a look at for the day? I think that's uh, pretty good. Pretty good coverage there, I think. Uh, nothing else jumps out at me. Yeah. You know, for everyone on our Patreon, thank you as always for tuning in to watch the stats show. And for anyone picking up, picking us up on YouTube, thanks for coming by. See you next week.